Welcome to another video. Hmm, what's behind the door? Ah! Well, no, uh, it's just a wiring closet. We're doing a quick tour of our home wiring closet. And I know what you're thinking. How boring. Has it really come to this? Well, actually, it has. Schools are closed. There's padlocks on all the playgrounds, and it's pouring down rain. So what a better time to clean up our wiring closet, remove a bunch of stuff. And uh, I'm actually a pretty amateur at this, so hopefully somebody watching this could give me a few uh, suggestions on how to improve it. There's actually some method to this madness. It's organized in a sort of top-to-bottom fashion with the most used stuff being in the middle. On the top level, we've got all the networking equipment, uh, like our switches and uh, all that kind of stuff. On the next level, we've got video and TV, both Category 6 cable and coax. Below that, we start to get into the equipment. We've got PCs, stereo receiver, a printer, etc. On the bottom, off to the left, you don't see a patch panel. And on the right, also out of sight, is a UPS. Now, this is not a standard rack. This is just a metal shelf from Costco. It was about $70. It has plenty of room around the equipment for air, makes it easy to route and attach wires, and doesn't constrain me to rack mount style equipment that only fits in a tight little rack. And the large size of the shelf relative to the closet also discourages me and my family members from using this for any kind of storage. On the very top shelf of this, I have my main networking equipment, the cable modem, Ubiquiti edge router, and this gigabit switch. The only networking device not in this closet is the Wi-Fi access point, but that's by design. On the back wall of this handy power strip just to uh, mount it out of the way for easy access, you also notice a lot of the items and plugs are labeled excessively. For example, why do I need to label this switch? It's not because I don't know what a switch is, but if I'm away and I'm talking on the phone with my wife or my son, I can ask a question like, are the lights flashing on the switch? without a lot of explanation. Same thing with this diagram, which lets me just look at the cable modem at a glance and see if our internet connection is up. But despite all those precautions, the network's been really reliable. Now, all the wires get to this wiring closet through these two PVC pipes I have mounted in the ceiling, which lead to these bundles of wires I have strung throughout the attic, and they go back to the various rooms throughout the house. It's, it's a series of tubes. Anyway, I have different types of wires. I tried to initially keep all the category six in one pipe and the other wires, other types of wires in the other, but I didn't really keep that resolution. Anyway, there's an extra speaker wire for the future. I've got coax, a speaker wire. I'm using category six for various purposes besides networking. It all goes down to this patch panel, which uh, is not labeled entirely, but I do have the jacks numbered so I can easily patch down a new uh, connection. And I have various types of jacks throughout the house depending on what I need. The most complicated jack I have is this one in my office, which has, believe it or not, seven Ethernet ports and two USB ports. Now, I'm not using all those now. We'll see why in a second when I show you the next shelf, which is the video equipment shelf. We've got on the left side, we've got our two little devices which convert HDMI connections to Ethernet. So originally, I, I, when I was doing this, that top one is 4K, the bottom was 1080p. Originally, I had about four of those 1080p's, and those require two cables. The top one will convert everything with one cable, and on the other end, there's a device that converts it back to HDMI. Now, also on this board, you see a HD Home Run tuner mounted on the right, and then also that other box in the middle is a Sewell Blaster, or a Blast IR, to transmit infrared signals from other rooms back to this room. I've got the Sewell device in the living room, and it works probably over 80 feet of cable. You can see there it's flashing. It relays signals to both the stereo equipment and also this other thing over here, which is an old Microsoft Windows media adapter. It takes infrared, believe it or not, and converts it to USB. This is left over. It's sort of an old thing from the days of Windows Media Center, which is long gone in my household. But believe it or not, it still works with Chrome. So I can be watching a video and pause it with this remote if I don't want to grab the keyboard. And it works just fine in Windows 10 without any drivers. So I've kind of left that hooked up as an alternative to the keyboard. And right below that, I have a little shelf with some coax stuff on it. Don't really use coax much other than to get the signal to the cable modem, but other than that, I have it split and sent to every TV so I can get my over-the-air antenna there. Go through that amplifier and then through a splitter. I'd say we rarely use live coax TV. Uh, just like to have it around as a backup, uh, you know, in case there's a Super Bowl party or whatever, or an important news event. And uh, the antenna that runs the HD home run and all that stuff, there are actually two antennas in the attic tuned for over-the-air reception. Moving down to the next shelves, we start to get into our equipment. Obviously on the left, I've got my 5.1 channel uh, stereo receiver. I've still got a CD player, don't really use it much because I've got direct connections to all these PCs. On the right, I've got my main desktop for video editing and all other, pretty much everything I do is on that PC. 
Notice I've got it turned around back facing this way, both for heat and to access the USB 3.0 port, since all I get extended back to the desk is a 2.0 port, which is okay for the occasional file transfer. Got a couple of cables hanging around in case I need to hook up a phone or uh, one of those tape decks for those many other videos we do. Uh, I rarely use physical media in this drive, but I, if I really need to, I can open it up. Uh, I really mostly just use the uh, drive in the home theater PC, which is on the shelf below. Moving on down to the next shelf, you see I've got more equipment. I've got the printer scanner, which I keep around on the left. It's hanging in there. It's pretty old. Probably wouldn't replace it here. I'll put a wireless one elsewhere in the house when it dies. On the right, I've got my uh, home theater PC, which pretty much we use for all TV viewing. I've got it facing the right way, so my wife and son can just pop a DVD in there, but we don't do that very often. Uh, we've really got streaming mostly. Got a direct optical connection between that PC and the stereo receiver, so I can get you know Dolby Digital 5.1 and DTS off of uh, Blu-rays and DVDs. Keep going down below that, there's another receiver. That Yamaha on the left is a two-channel receiver I have hooked up to some speakers on the back porch. I think I've shown uh, a video about it before. It can be controlled via an app, so there's no need for infrared repeaters there. Also, the software is a little buggy, so on the right you see that power strip. There's an old timer on there. The purpose of that timer is simply to reboot the Yamaha every night, like 3 a.m., it just reboots it. If I don't reboot that thing, the uh, streaming audio gets scratchy for some reason. And this stereo and other equipment, even though it's in a power strip here that's on, sitting on top of the UPS, it is not plugged into the UPS. Some of the equipment is, like the networking and computers, and some of it's not. It makes the UPS last longer. Now, why do you need a UPS? Back in 2017, we had this weird power surge thing. It was like somebody was turning the whole neighborhood on and off like a switch. Everything was going crazy, but all of our equipment kept on running just fine because I had the UPS, of course this monitor is on a UPS and everything back in the closet. And our internet has not gone Beep. down in quite some time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, the UPS itself is in two parts. You've got the top part, which is the control unit, and the bottom part, which has eight batteries. Somebody actually gave me this UPS and I replaced the batteries. And uh, it keeps everything running, no outages. That's why we suggest to get one! <laughs> I didn't realize you're so enthusiastic about the UPS. So would I do it again? Will I do it again in the next house? Yes. I mean, uh, some form of it. I probably would back off. I, you know, some things I went a little extreme. I didn't need seven network jacks. But, you know, I like the flexibility. Wired connections are inherently more stable and easier to deal with than wireless if you have the option. Having the power on for everything during an outage is great. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I will probably always try to have a centralized wiring closet if possible just for convenience. So do you think someday when you have your own house, you'll, you'll run these wires like this? Uh, probably, but I'll ask for your help. Okay, well, anyway, <laughs> uh, that's about it. And, and uh, see you next time for another awesome video. Thank you.